Alright guys, have to go back here again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Four weeks to the day until Modern Warfare 3 officially launches, but still plenty of teams not announcing their rosters as of yet. Big rumours emerging though over the last couple of days as to what the Vegas Legion might potentially be up to. We've heard the rumours with Clayster potentially to Carolina. What are Vegas doing instead? Why is Zima particularly confident? What players might he have heard on this roster that's making him confident about this team given the circumstances they're not realistically going to be mixing it up with the big boys? Very very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into. First of all, this. These are rumours with regard to next year's title. It's kind of funny how this works, right? We're probably going to have rumours as well on 2025 title soon enough. But these are rumours as to the maps that are going to be in the game come at COD 2024. That's going to be Treyarch's Call of Duty coming out next year. And we know at this point, bringing back the old school throwback maps is the way to go. And I think it makes a lot of sense. These are two maps that are being linked to next year's Treyarch title. This, if you guys don't remember, is Grinds, an absolutely fantastic map from Black Ops 2, at least for pubs. It wasn't played in competitive. I don't really know if it would have worked in competitive. It probably wouldn't, to be fair, but it was a really fun pub map. The snipers loved it because there were so many sniper spots you could get, like collaterals and everything on this one. It was actually a DLC map, I think, brought into the first DLC. Really good fun. That apparently is coming back in next year's game, as is this this map, and if you guys know this one, then you, you're cultured, shall I say, because this is WMD from Black Ops 1. Again, not a competitive map. I think there's probably a chance this could have worked for Search and Destroy, to be honest. But um, I love this map, man. This is one of my favorite maps back in Black Ops 1 for public matches, for everything. So, yeah, exciting stuff. And to be honest, if they're bringing back Grind, if they're bringing back WMD, knowing Treyarch's you know, they kind of like competitive play. They at least have respect for the competitive players, unlike some developers. And I imagine if they bring back these maps, they will also bring back some other actual, you know, competitive maps from back then. What if we got like Havana from Black Ops 1 or, you know, even Hanoi or something that was viable for Search and Destroy would be a good one to think about for sure. There's also some drama going on around the smokes. You guys might remember this that happens way back at the start of the 2022 season when Draza pops this smoke on himself on Kleenex and eventually gets the kill to close out the rounds. Now, yeah, the smokes cause a lot of controversy at this point, mainly because a bit of a one-way smoke going on. And the smokes in the in the games for some time now are, have never been great. You can kind of partially see through them if you're in them. And it's very inconsistent. And this is always the problem with the snipers. The snipers are usually very strong in the game, but people think, oh, well, you can use smokes to counter the snipers. But the issue with the smoke is that you can use it as Draza used it, and it just creates a massive amount of inconsistency to the point where they've pretty much been banned by the pros over the last couple of years. And we saw this at the time, right, when Draza said someone's got to get smoked out ASAP. And then Simp and Draza had a bit of a beef and a back and forth. And, I mean, just absolutely fantastic stuff. You are horrible. Of course, now they're teammates. I'm allowed to face. Can you believe it? It's uh, been a wild couple of years in the COD space, no doubt. So then we get this from Noisy, he says. Smoke grenades are the same as last year, so you can one-way them again, which is a bit of a problem. I don't know if they'll want to fix them. I remember, I think it was Black Ops Cold War, when, again, they were the smoke grenades were kind of broken. They were one-waying. You could kind of half see through them. You could see through the edges. If you stood in it, you could see the other guy. He couldn't see you. Stuff like this that caused problems for competitive play in terms of inconsistency. Apparently it's the same again, but Black Ops Cold War, I'm pretty sure after a couple of months, they actually fixed them to make them pretty much entirely opaque, which was definitely a good thing, but at that point it was too late, the pros didn't want to bring them in, they didn't want to bring back the snipers, etc, etc. But this year, maybe Sejima can fix this, but maybe they're going to be as they were last year and they're going to get banned. And um, Draza says, yes, I mean, you know, because I think what he's saying is, oh, let's go, the smokes are one wayable. I'll be abusing that. But then he thinks, damn, like, it. they're going to ban them again, I won't be able to abuse it. So, yeah, it's kind of funny how Simp and Abizi and those guys were really on the train against Draza at the time when he was abusing these one-way smokes, and now they're going to be like, oh, yeah, go on, Draza, that's my boy. Like, it's the same thing with Sasha and Sally or whatever you want to say. It's always how it goes, but um, that's an interesting storyline to keep your eyes out for going forwards. Now, let's talk about the Vegas Legion and what they might be up to. Zinster replied to the flank guys and said, look, 
do you think we, you know, why haven't we heard anything about Vegas? What are they doing? Because Zenstar, he has a Vegas Legion jersey. He's actually a legitimate Legion fan. And I respect that a lot because, you know, he's had to suffer through some pain over the last couple of years. But this season, what are they going to do? Last year, Vegas really mixed it up. And I know a lot of that was the clay effect. They were like the second most popular team for some time. Second, third most popular team. Everyone wanted Vegas to succeed. Part of that was clay. But I think part of it was because they had a pretty likable team in general. People wanted, you know, standard got dropped. People wanted the redemption arc over there. Of course, people like Donny Temp in general, Clayster, of course. And then Legion as an organization had gone from being, um, you know, the, the, the clowns of the league. They rebrand a bit. They, you know, they bring in Clay and they had that nice little underdog story. I don't know whether that will be the same for the Ravens this season if Clay goes there because it should be to some extent. I don't know if they'll quite have the same, like, aura that Vegas Legion had last season the Carolina Royal Ravens hit the same probably not but um there's still going to be some part of that if Clay goes to Carolina which I, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen they have brought in Brian Saint as their coach we've seen Clay and Standy and Brian Saint playing in CS over the last couple of days it's kind of a no-brainer I think that's happening and of course there's been questions as to how Carolina might round out that team will they bring in a Tatch there's been some rumors as to, you know, they're bringing a couple of challenger players. Some of the top challenger players will look in a second to round out that roster. There's been talks about Nero and others as well. But some of those guys that might be left over could be going to the Vegas Legion. So since you asked the question, on the flank, they actually address this. And Zuma and Ben talk about it. Pretty funny, I've got to say, because Ben's initial assessment is... This team is special, but not in a good way. Like, you know, they, they ain't good. It's, um, you know, it's not a pretty team. But then actually Zuma says, well, actually, I think they could be pretty good. They are not going to be top four. You know, like there's no team really that you can form. I think you can still form a team that can make champs. But I think you're going to struggle to form a team of the players left that can get, you know, top four on a weekend. Even that is going to be a challenge. But, you know, there's fighting for champs qualification is definitely still on the cards here for these teams if they build the right rosters. And Zuma says, well, you know what? This isn't actually that bad. It's um, it's going to be an interesting team, apparently, what Vegas are putting together. But it might well have some players that Zuma and the flank guys are partial to, which has been a big talking point of the last couple of years. Los Angeles, good as though, I don't think I have any idea what they're doing. Uh, let me see. Do you think the reason we haven't heard anything from, the, uh, from them regarding Vegas Legion's roster is because they're cooking up something special as one of their very few fans i need to know if there's hope or it's chalk before the season even starts listen it's not the good kind of special i'll just say listen that. listen <laughs> listen from what i've heard chat, it, listen from what i heard exenster this is what i'll say okay it's not Dude, bad it's... honestly no it's not bad from, from what i've heard with vegas i'm, I'm, I'm kind of like wait put me bad. the team i want to hear who this team is nah, on vegas. I, I, I listen I, I this is this is one i cannot say unfortunately this is one i cannot say you, you know what i'm saying i, I, know, I respect I that i respect that, that tom this you know? one i i agree with tom this one depends how i get my info it might, it might it might surprise some people i don't think it's terrible but to pat's point like i don't see this team suddenly just being some top <clears throat> four fucking powerhouse contender. Yeah. There's winning combinations that are still out there to be formed on these rosters. That's why it makes me curious. They can make winning teams with the players that are left. So as I say, Clay Sir, we think to Carolina and what they round out their team with. Because for some time we thought Clay attached Stanley Nero. They might still do that. But I don't actually know if Attach is going with Clay anymore. Maybe that was never the case. Maybe it still is the case. I can definitely see a world in which Attach goes to Los Angeles Grillers. Just because, I, to be honest, I thought that was going to happen a while ago anyway. It makes a lot of sense, to be honest, for Attach to go to LA from California, etc, etc. So, I don't know. I can kind of see a world in which that happens and Clay has another AR duo on his team. There's the likes of God RX out there as well that are definitely worthy of note. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see because yeah, if Carolina put together like um, something like, you know, Clay, God RX, Stanley plus one, that's, um, you know, that's pretty good on paper. I'm not going to lie. I think Clay can get a lot of God RX as well. And Clay's also been grinding tournaments. Pretty funny that uh, he played. I think he was not really taking the mick, but someone the other day played a 6v6 hardpoint tournament or domination tournament, I think it was, domination slash hardpoint tournament on Modern Warfare 3 on the beta, right? What you do is you get a guy, you have six group of guys, you go into the lobby and you just wait until you find the guys you want to play against and then you let the server do the rest for you. I think Clay was in the final. So I'm guessing he lost because I don't think he tweeted about it after after the series is over. Yeah, he says, final starting now. So I'm guessing it didn't go in his favor. But still, Clay's already getting on here early doors. So what are Vegas going to do with their team? I think that Clay won't be here. I don't know if they... It depends what budget Vegas have again. Because last year, definitely Clay and I think Temp were getting paid more than the minimum. I don't think they were getting paid... 
anything wild, like crazy high, but I'm pretty sure they were getting paid something at least relatively respectable by Vegas, more so than the minimums they've been doing before. But uh, I don't know if they want to continue that. Maybe it's going to be back to reality here for Legion and they're going to go straight back to 55k or whatever it is now with the inflation stuff. This was their team last year with Pro Loot. Then they swapped out Pro Loot for Two Wheel. Then they swapped out Two Wheel for Standy, right? And then that was the team for the end of the season. Temp might come back here. And I think that might be the most likely situation now is because... Is Temp going to go with Clay to Ravens? Probably not. And I guess Temp's going to make the decision as to whether he takes an offer from Vegas because he probably will have one or whether he decides to go to challenges. But that seems a little bit unlikely that he would commit to something like that. So yeah, maybe Temp and TJ, they come back together here. That's a possibility. But there are plenty of players out there that Vegas could still acquire. I mean, I just want to look through some of the top cards here to see which guys are available. I mean, Beans is available. Nero is available. I think Nero would be a really good pick for one of these teams to get because I haven't really heard him linked to many of these teams to be honest and I know that he was on like Los Angeles Gooders Academy for a bit so maybe there's something to be said about that but still I think the Nero would be a, a steal if someone can actually get him on their roster because I think he's definitely can mix it up with the best of the best from an SMG perspective of course most of these guys are signed Crimp is there Nasty is another one you've got to think about here because I mean, he was such a good player for London, given their circumstances, for especially towards the end of the season. He's got to get a spot somewhere. And I'm pretty sure that Ravens are just going to go full American, right, with Carolina and they're bringing on, maybe not American, but you know what I mean, like North American at the very least. Maybe a Canadian player sneaks in. But I don't think Nasi's going to be there. So, you know, Nasi definitely is a CDL caliber player. Like, he's better than a lot of the people that have actually already been signed into the league as far as I'm concerned. So, I don't know where he's going to go, but not not many options remaining. Then you've got Brack, and we'll come back to a scene. You've got the likes of Fame, who was pretty good this last year. And then as you get further down, there's plenty of other players that you could also give a chance. A seam, though, is the one that I'll be looking at here. Just because we know how it goes with a seam and uh, the flank guys, it's always a conversation that oh, our seam gets you know, gassed up too much by the flank, he gets super overrated. I don't really, I think it kind of falls somewhere in between. A seam's like, it's a tough player to judge because he is genuinely, typically, very good at the start of games. There's no out about it he is usually one of the top players in the first couple of months of titles but then typically he'll regress somewhat he won't be as good in the middle towards the end of the season and then people say oh I seem super overrated because you know he'll have a great start to the year the flank guys because they're boys with them will gas him up beat him oh yeah seems the man a top 10 player the top five player in the game all this stuff and then he doesn't really deliver on that as the season regresses and people are like oh I seem so overrated but I just think it's um I don't know for whatever reason it's a natural progression for a scene but he is legitimately really good at the start of games so so I would, you know, if I was Vegas, I would definitely be looking at a seam. I think it's not a bad shout at all. And I don't know, maybe you can look at um, this and think, okay, maybe Donny 10, maybe a seam comes in as one of the SMGs, get another SMG like, um, you know, you need some slaying in there, I guess. So maybe you get one of the top challengers SMG prospects in Gwyn or something and then round out the team with someone who can, you know, I also like a seam because he's got like, um, he's got a level head on him. He's mature. He has some leadership qualities. Like there are other elements to a seam that make him a good teammate in addition to just being a pretty good player, especially at the start of games. These are, as well, the challenger players to look at. A boozer has been signed. The other ones we're looking for, really, okay, we know that Linz is gone, we know that Snoopy's gone, and as obviously Metals and these guys, Eric Boom and Co., they're going to Heretics. But the other players, I mean, Neptune, I think, really... He is the king of challenges, right? This guy dominates down there. And I do hope he gets a spot back on a CDL team. Possibly Carolina will look at him. Possibly Vegas should look at him. Then you've got Gwyn, who I think definitely should be looked at after having a good season on Seattle Surge's bench and never getting a chance. So yeah, I would look at a combination of some of those players as to what Vegas are up to. As I say, Gorillas, I really have no idea. But Attach might make sense if you look at it from that perspective. So yeah, tweet your thoughts in the comments below. Will a scene be part of that Vegas team he'd be you know doing some franchise hopping it's got to be said over the last few years if that was to be the case but um yeah Krimmer to see had a bit of a fun time playing the beta the other day so maybe that's going to continue and just to close out the video then the well Halo World Championship has probably just about got underway they released the
the HCS Unlocked episode with Formal here, which was incredibly well done. And then here today, we have the Halo World Championship beginning. So yeah, we looked earlier today at the groups, which looked like this. These are the pools. Pretty sure that just two of these teams get out of each pool and then they go on from there, which probably makes sense. Opting number one seeds, they have the most favorable pool on paper and they are playing probably right about now the complexity match, which, um, well, this is the schedule for day one. And then, well, day two, day three goes on and the champion will be crowned come this Sunday. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.